A woman in a bad marriage decided to chronicle her divorce and preceding life on social media. A lot of people found this to be motivational, even inspirational. However, her strict South Asian community wasn't really on board, and this led to tragedy. Before we move on, I'd like to give a shout out to PDS Debt for sponsoring this episode. I know that a lot of you out there are just like me, wishing there was a better way to pay off debt. Maybe you're struggling with credit card debt, personal loans, debt collection agencies, or even medical bills. It's no secret that inflation just keeps going up, and gas prices don't really seem to be getting any better either, so maybe now's the time to think about how to really more efficiently pay off those debts. If you're making payments on your debt every single month and your balance really still isn't going down, then this is for you. PDS Debt is giving viewers of this channel a free debt savings analysis just for completing the 30-second online debt assessment at pdsdebt.com slash diretrip. You'll get a full breakdown on how to save on interest each month and the quickest way to take care of your debt. PDS Debt rolls all of your payments into one low, easy, 0% interest monthly payment. Everyone with over $10,000 or more in debt qualifies, and the cool thing is that there's no minimum credit score required. Fair and even bad credit is also accepted. You can end up saving thousands on interest and fees, and not to mention pay off your debts in a fraction of the time. Like I said, PDS Debt is offering a free debt analysis to my listeners just for completing the quick and easy debt assessment at pdsdebt.com slash diretrip. That's pdsdebt.com slash diretrip. And now back to the content. Today we have the tragic story of a woman named Sonia Khan. Sonia, while going through a lot of hardships in her own life, really came alive while on camera. She had the natural ability to capture her real, raw emotion on camera, which is not something a lot of people can do, and this really drew in a lot of her fans. A lot of people became really interested in hearing her story, which would also lead to her downfall. She, like most people, tried to find the joy that she portrayed on camera in her real life as well. On Instagram, one of the first platforms she started using, she wrote, I help people fall in love with themselves and with each other in front of the camera. Sonia was originally from Chattanooga out in Tennessee, but later moved to Chicago. She was the daughter of two Pakistani immigrants who were devout Muslims, and she became a part of this culture as well. She looked to marry someone of the same culture, and she found someone who she felt fit the bill a man named Rahil Ahmad. She started dating Rahil for a solid five years and eventually went on to marry him in June of 2021. They later moved to Chicago together. They had a fabulous, big, fat Pakistani wedding, said a childhood friend of hers. But the marriage was built on the foundation of lies and manipulation. These lies were mainly in relation to Rahil's long-standing mental health problems, which he refused to divulge to Sonia, at least in full detail. The two had spent most of their time together in a long-distance relationship, so Sonia wasn't really around to see any weird quirks that Rahil may have displayed in person. Her friends felt that, because of this, she didn't really have any idea of how incompatible they would actually be. Shortly after the wedding, Rahil began attacking her verbally. Gradually, this led to episodes of physical violence as well. These problems really came to a boil in December of 2021 when Rahil had a mental health crisis in front of Sonia, one that apparently resulted in violence and left her feeling unsafe. Sonia had, for a time, been very quiet about her unhappy marriage. This episode, though, convinced her to open up about what was really going on behind the scenes. She started telling her friends that she was definitely struggling in her marriage, despite appearances. She said that Rahil wasn't sleeping, that he was acting strangely, and that he was outright refusing any sort of medical help, whether it be treatment or therapy. She felt that, because he refused any kind of help, it was really all on her to manage his mental state, which she didn't really feel qualified to do. Rahil started monitoring her online content, trying to control what she posted, where she posted, and who she talked to. He constantly lectured her about keeping her reputation up or rather, keeping their reputation up. At one point, Rahil even threatened to end both of their lives by grabbing her and jumping out of their 10th story apartment window together. Some of her friends told her that she should leave her marriage, but on the other hand, many others tried to convince her to stay. A friend of Sonia's met up with her out in Chicago a few months later. She told me that divorce was considered shameful and that she was extremely lonely, she said. She added that Sonia continuously worried about cultural and societal pressures to stay in her marriage, saying that she was worried about what people would say. 
Sonia's own parents had actually divorced. Because of this, she was able to see firsthand exactly how much of a stigma that South Asian families can face when it comes to divorce, especially when it comes to divorced women. There's a lot of cultural pressure around the impacted family and how it looks to the outside world, said a woman named Neha Gill, who is the executive director of Apnagar, which is an organization based in Chicago that offers culturally sensitive services to mainly South Asian women who are facing abuse from their partners. She said that a lot of these cultures see women as inferior, needing someone to control them. The cultures are very communal, so it's about prioritizing family or community over a person's safety and well-being," she added. However, after getting more and more support from her family and friends, Sonia finally got the courage and motivation to go out and file for divorce. She was even able to secure a hearing for August to really get that divorce finalized. She then went out and got a fancy new restraining order and a brand new set of locks for her doors. Her family pressured her to stay with her husband, but she went along with the divorce regardless. In her online post, she said that she was well on her way to starting a new chapter in her new life. She moved to a new area in Chicago, putting a good distance between herself and her soon-to-be ex-husband. Now here's where the cameras come more into play. She made an account on TikTok where she got a pretty good chunk of followers. On that platform, she decided to document her entire divorce and her journey to a new life. She said that she was now the black sheep of her community and that she was leaving a marriage that she shouldn't have been in to begin with. However, this could also get pretty negative as she also discussed the shame she felt, mainly coming from her strict community. She talked about how hard it is to completely start over in life, but her openness really appealed to the people around her, especially people stuck in similar situations. Eventually, thousands were listening. Going through a divorce as a South Asian woman feels like you failed at life sometimes, she said. My family members told me that if I left my husband, I would be letting the devil win, that I dress like a prostitute, and if I move back to my hometown, they'll all end their own lives, she said in another post. Women are always expected to stay silent, she wrote. It's what keeps us in messed up situations in the first place. She gradually got less negative and more positive, though, feeling that she was now on a mission. This is what I meant to do, to spread the word about my relationship and be a leader for women leaving their toxic marriages," she proclaimed. With each post, she garnered a lot of support, much to her surprise. On the other hand, less surprisingly, she got a lot of backlash from her community about airing the dirty laundry in her divorce proceedings. Eventually, though, about 20,000 people were following her on TikTok and listening to what she had to say. Sonia started off her career by working as a social worker and as an advocate for low-income families. Soon after, she got a job as a flight attendant and used the money from this job to support her budding career as a photographer. She was kind of a jack-of-all-trades, trying out all sorts of careers, but photography was what really stuck with her as a passion. My life truly began the day I purchased my first DSLR, she went on to write on her website. After living on her own for a while, putting her awful marriage behind her and starting to work as a photographer, she felt like she was really getting her life back on track. She was on the right path. Sonia started photographing a wide range of situations, weddings, maternity shoots, baby showers, and similar events. She often worked mainly for big-time clients, but she also did shoots for her friends. Rahil Ahmad had moved to a different state after the two had separated, almost 700 miles away. He was living in a town called Alpharad, Georgia. Sonia decided that on July 21st, she was going to leave Chicago and go back to her hometown, Chattanooga, to start her new life as a professional photographer and leave the whole mess behind her. Sadly, she wouldn't make it to the 21st. She would return to Chattanooga, but it would be in a coffin. Her bags were packed, tickets bought, plans set in stone. In her mind, she was all good to go. She was finally about to leave. This whole city and all of the bad memories that came with it were about to be part of the past for good. But little did she know, Raheel decided to travel all the way back to Chicago, seemingly in hopes of salvaging their marriage. He made the 11-hour drive back from Georgia, where he was staying, and showed up at Sonia's apartment. Once his own family noticed that he was missing, they called for a welfare check, asking the authorities to check Sonia's apartment to see if he was there. It was the only place they could think of that he could have went, and they were correct. Rahil, after showing up at the apartment, presumably got into an argument with Sonia. Unfortunately, we will never know the true details of what exactly went down. What we do know, though, is that Rahil brought a gun with him. 
Perhaps he was planning to kill Sonya all along, or maybe he was only going to shoot her if she refused his advances. We don't really know. The reason that we will never know is because he shot her in the head that evening. That became the sad ending to her online journey to escape this marriage from hell. If anything, it only served as a dark way to prove what she was saying about how horrible her marriage was, and about how truly brutal the stigma against divorce was within her culture. When the police arrived to perform the welfare check at Sonya's apartment, Rahil turned the gun on himself in an attempt to end his own life as well. The Chicago police officers found both Sonya and Rahil unresponsive with gunshot wounds to the head. They pronounced Sonya dead on the scene, but they transported Rahil to the hospital. He passed away as well though, being pronounced dead there at the hospital. Sonya was only 29 years old at the time of her death, while Rahil was 36. The coroners officially identified the bodies and listed Sonya's death as a homicide while concluding that Rahil had ended his own life. This sent shockwaves throughout their entire close-knit community. Other women in her community that had sympathized with Sonya and gotten some motivation from her journey were now struck with a feeling of fear and hopelessness. Experts, though, still feel that Sonya's journey was very important. They felt that it really brought up some discussions that were long overdue, mainly conversations about shaming, sexism, and male domination over women in South Asian communities. Sonya herself had earlier said, The way the community labels you, the lack of emotional support you receive, and the pressure to stay with someone because of what people will say is isolating. It makes it harder for women to leave marriages that they shouldn't have been in to begin with. A lot of the women in her community were pressured into marriage in the first place, sometimes with people they didn't even want to. Many of them were told, just say yes, for the sake of their family and reputation. There's this stigma in our community that puts pressure on women to sacrifice, said the executive director at Houston area survivor organization Daya, a woman named Rachna Carr, to sacrifice their emotional and physical well-being for the good of others. And while we all want to be altruistic human beings, it's an undue burden on women specifically. Her death shocked her family, her friends, and of course her online following as well. Even people who didn't really even follow her or know who she was before this were moved by her case. Even people outside of her community who just simply understood what it was like to be trapped in a bad relationship. Hell, even men in a similar atmosphere of pressure were deeply moved by her case. She said 29 is going to be her year, and it's going to be a new beginning, said one of her good friends from college. She was so excited. Her friends felt that she was always a joy to be around. She was always positive, real, and selfless. The perfect friend to be around. She was honest and good-natured, to a fault. She was someone who would give you the shirt off her back, said her best friend. Even when she was going through some really rough times in her life, she would be the first to call you and ask you how your day was going. Sonya's friends back home organized an event outside of her old school where they shared memories, played her favorite songs, and released balloons in her honor. A scholarship was even set up in her name. Various news agencies have tried to reach out to both Sonya's family and Rahil's family for comment on this story, but unfortunately, both of them have outright refused. Once again, thank you for watching my video. Uh, if you found it interesting, please give it a like. It really helps me out in the algorithm and gets it to get seen by others. If you find content like this interesting, feel free to subscribe. I talk about it every week, sometimes twice. If you don't mind, go ahead and follow me on social media as well. I mean, you know how YouTube is with content like this. If the channel were to ever to go down, that would be the only way you'd ever hear about it. And if you want to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon account, which I always keep linked down in the description below. Speaking of which, shout out to the top patrons. Starfade, Astral, Raven, Entrepinaut, Grack, El Palmieri, Salad, Kevin, AMCMT, Rick of Work in Progress USA, Tang, Sash Johnson, Marianne McCurdy, Buttery Frankus, Wafrans, Jules Latona, Arctic Cat, Alan Damiani, Marsh, Buffazerk, Rensenstein, Kim Peek, Lex Luther, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Scoochie Maine, Jackie, and Mark Barnett. You are splendid. This has been your host, Kyle. Thank you, and good night.